Alright, so we're gonna take apart, disassemble, and put back together Smith & Wesson Model 620 revolver. So the first thing you need to make sure you have is uh, gun cleaner and solvent and gun oil whenever you're going to be working on a gun. Obviously you want to make sure your workspace is clean and you've got a nice absorbent um, work surface as well as a number of rags as well as a nice clean kit for the gun that you're going to be working on. <clears throat> um, it's also recommended to have the exact size of screwdriver heads for your your various screws uh, in order to make sure that you don't uh, strip one of the screws during the process of uh, <clears throat> disassembly and reassembly. So first thing you gotta do with the Model 620 is you gotta take off the uh, nice grip here. This one is uh, very straightforward. you got that you just kind of slip it back and that's how you get to the cover plate of the firearm and as you can see there's three screws and once you match up the size that you're going to be using as far as the head of your screwdriver then you're going to go ahead and unscrew them now I've already unscrewed this and put it back together and cleaned it so this one is pretty straightforward and easy to remove you may find yourself with a little bit more difficulty when you first remove these especially if you're just getting it from uh, the factory so once you've actually got it removed and make sure not to uh, um, <clears throat> exert too much force and if you find yourself uh, with the screwdriver slipping you want to make sure to get a better size so once you've got the screws out, you're going to need to hit this enclosure. One thing to note, there is a catch right here, uh, so that part will not come up. And depending on how dirty your gun is, this may take a while. The first time I did it, it took quite a while. Once you've got that disassembled, then the cover plate should just come right off. And as you can see, mine's nice and clean, uh, but your mileage may vary based on the status of your firearm. So there's one little piece that comes out, and it's very important to remember that it goes over this this uh, bottom peg here, not the back peg. It's kind of the middle peg right above where your hand goes. And you can remove that. And once you've cleaned out this area, that's... Uh, uh, important to make sure to clean with solvent and then oil as you uh, get rid of the residue. But the next thing you want to do after you've taken off the cover plate and removed this uh, this little piece here, you're going to want to take out the the barrel of the revolver. Not the barrel of the gun, but the, um, the actual, I don't know what this thing's called. But anyways, you want to remove these parts and this won't come out during normal operation because this this uh, this screw actually holds it in place so it won't come out and once you've got that done now you're fully ready to clean and oil your gun after you do your processes and in order to properly clean your firearm you'll want to probably look that information up as well so anyways now that you've disassembled it you're going to reassemble Make sure before you reassemble any firearm, you want to make sure that you're not leaving any fingerprints or residue other than gun oil on the pieces that you're reassembling. It makes it easier, it keeps it cleaner. And if you don't agree with that, that's up to you. You'll find <coughs> what works for you best based on your interaction with your cleaning of your firearms. Like most things, it's 
it's depending on how much level of effort you want to put into it and whether or not you find something that works for you. So for me, I found that putting things together by not touching them as much as possible seems to be the cleanest way of reassembling. Alright. And I'm going to put this area back together. And this kind of just goes, like I just find it to go vertically, so put it in like that. And then, as you can see, there's a little catch right here. That piece has got to go in first. And uh, then you just kind of push down a little. Tap it into place. It's a very tight fit. Once you've gotten it started, and you can put the screws back in depending on how far you've gotten. Sometimes you have to put it in a couple times, I've found. Once you do find a good way that it goes in, it should just go right in. <clears throat> I've also find if you do like that, uh, you will get it to go in easier for some reason. That's probably due to the action of the internal components. Um, so that's important as well. As you know. Once you've got it actually fully assembled, make sure to match your screws up with the proper holes. It's very important that you don't lose the uh, the position of these screws. They do they do have specific holes that they go in, and if you screw up and mess up and put in the wrong screw in the wrong hole, you'll find yourself either having an issue or some other problem down the line. Once you've got them all three in, you kind of just work your way around. You don't want to tighten it too hard. Just kind of thumb tight. Because after all, these are going <clears> to <throat> set up once you've fired it a couple times. And make sure that you have even oiled the screws because those will rust over time and then getting them out is even funner. So once you've got that done and you're going to reassemble the the grip onto the firearm you want to make sure that you've oiled and cleaned this area and that you don't have any fingerprints on this area that helps uh, And here we go, and you just kind of slide this down the slot, and it just kind of goes right back on. And there you go. And that's how she's fully re stripped and reassembled. Now, that's not a field strip, that's a, that's a full strip that you would do that when you're going to either store the firearm for a long period of time or after a really intensive um, shooting usage you want to make sure it's nice and lubricated and, and that the action is functional <clears throat> 